As Formula One takes a look forward to its cleanest and most sustainable era ever with a brand new set of power unit regulations and with cars on track at the moment with over a thousand brake horsepower, the most potent there have been in the history of Formula One, at least in race conditions, I thought it would be worth taking a look at how we've got to where we are because it's quite a complex and convoluted route to the current situation. Formula One first started in 1947 as a set of regulations. The World Championship started three years later, but when those regulations came out, they regulated that every single car on the grid must have a normally aspirated four and a half liter engine or a 1.5 liter supercharged engines. This was very much based on the pre-war Vacherette regulations. But what wasn't restricted was the engine layout. You could have as many cylinders as you liked arranged in whatever configuration that you could come up with. That even saw people coming up with 16 cylinder engines such as BRM. The first big change to the technical regulations when it came to engines came in 1954. And the size of the engines was reduced significantly. The largest normally aspirated engine could only be two and a half liters. And there was also the capacity in the technical regulations to build a 750cc supercharged engine. But no one bothered with that. Everybody went for the two and a half liter regulations. Formula One though was already starting to establish its reputation, well-earned reputation, for advanced technology. The Mercedes team who arrived in 1954 used direct fuel injection, something that they'd developed during World War II on fighter aircraft. And that's something that is still with Formula One to this day. The engines themselves were changing, but so was what the teams had decided to do with them. There was still great freedom in terms of the engine's configuration and layout. Everything from 4 to 12 cylinders was used during this era. But it wasn't until 1956 that things got truly revolutionary, when Bugatti made their one and only Grand Prix appearance. That car had the engine mounted behind the driver, an approach that was to go on and become universal, but was not really popularised until 1956. And the Cooper Car Company decided to build their own Formula One car that was of a minute engine design. Slowly, everybody picked up this approach, but one person was particularly resistant to this Enzo Ferrari. He said the horse should always pull the cart, not push it. The 1960s saw some pretty substantial changes to the engine technical regulations. Starting in 1961, the maximum size of the engine was reduced down to just one and a half litres and supercharging was altogether banned. Initially, power levels were right down to about 150 brake horsepower, but eventually rose up to about 250 brake horsepower. And Ferrari, well, they relented and they built their first mid-engine car, the famous Sharknose. Despite supercharging having been banned in 1961, forced induction was far from gone from Formula One. In 1966, supercharging was back with a maximum capacity of one and a half litres for a supercharged engine or three litres for a normally aspirated engine. Engine configuration was still completely free and it saw some slightly wild ideas such as the BRM H16 engine, an engine so complicated and heavy it was never a great success. In 1967 a true revolution hit the sport of Formula One. It was the Ford Cosworth double four valve or better known as the DFV. This engine in various trims went on to absolutely dominate the sport all the way into the 1980s. The sport's kit car era had arrived. Ten years after the introduction of the DFV, there was another quiet revolution in the sport of Formula One, quite literally slightly quieter, because it was the arrival of the turbocharged Renault. Renault were the first team to introduce turbocharging into Formula One, and it was an absolute disaster. The car broke down so often, it became nicknamed the yellow teapot. But the writing was on the wall. Turbocharging was the future of Grand Prix motor racing. The popularity of turbocharging in Formula One grew massively, Ferrari following Renault's lead and pretty much everybody else following after. And by 1986, pretty much every single car on the grid was turbocharged and indeed normally aspirated engines were even banned for a single season. And while the tag Porsche engines were powering McLarens to great success, a quiet force was building from the Far East. 
Honda had returned to Formula One. The Japanese manufacturer went on to absolutely dominate Formula One, first with the Williams team and then, more famously, with McLaren. That was right up until the rules changed yet again. In 1989, turbocharging was banned and a new engine formula was introduced that set a maximum capacity of 3.5 litres and a maximum number of cylinders set at 12. But Honda once again built a successful engine and the sport developed on from there with everything from V8s, V10s and V12s in competition. Following the events of 1994, there was a feeling that Formula One had just become a little bit too fast. And in order to address that, there was a reduction in the maximum capacity of 500cc, and every team had to use a 3-litre normally aspirated engine. There was still a bit of freedom on the layout of the engines though, right up until the year 2000, when the V10 engine was made mandatory, much to the annoyance of Toyota, who just designed a V12. In 2006, there was a mini revolution to the Formula One engine regulations. Every team, well, with the exception of one, had to use a 2.4 litre V8. And those 2.4 litre V8s were really just the old 3 litre V10s with two cylinders removed. The big change, though, came a little bit later in 2009 and the arrival of the first hybrid systems into Formula One. They'd first been experimented with about 10 years earlier, but in 2009 they were allowed in the regulation and four teams used them to great effect during that season. The next big revolution in Formula One engine technology came in 2014, and we no longer talk about Formula One engines, we talk about Formula One power units. Far more potent hybrid systems were introduced alongside 1.6 litre V6 turbocharged engines. These became the most efficient engines in the history, not just of Formula One, but the whole of motorsport. In fact, Mercedes a few years ago showed that their V6 engine had a thermal efficiency of more than 50%. Nobody knows how much further it's gone, but they were already breaking records back then. With the introduction of E10 fuel and a move to more sustainable fuels, Formula One was really set for exciting future.